right, folks, welcome back. After 60 years of ruling our nation independently, what has Jamaica achieved? Are we on the right path for development? And here to answer some questions, those and some more, the most honorable Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness. Um, I don't know if you're going to give me a hard time, but you know, from when I want to say the most honorable bro, God. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, welcome. Clearly Good morning, sir. Hello, Mr. <laughs> welcome Fierce. to Smile Jamaica, you. sir. It's great to have you um, with us. Um, I we have to tell him, congrats, I mean, after I admire his shoes, right? I mean, they're Clarks, so you know I'm going to love them because anything that's a Clark is good uh, for it's me. It's not only but Clarks, but it's Jamaica. No, you the, the, these are the special edition. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jamaica. Yes, sir. Colored featured. Yes, sir. Clarks. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank Quietly, you sir, I kind of have one to still <laughs> quiet. <laughs> I'm a uh, prime minister from a house. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I want to start with this. I saw this on the headline this morning, Independence Baby hopes for a safer Jamaica. How, how do you respond to that? I agree. I totally agree. Uh, every generation <clears throat> of this nation, uh, starting from our history of enslavement to emancipation to now, an independent nation would have faced probably uh, the most significant struggle of their lifetime. And I believe that for the generations coming from 1962 to now, they would have seen the country transition mm -hmm. from being a generally peaceful, harmonious country to now being a country struggling with violence and peace. Uh, peace in the communities, peace in the homes, peace in the schools, uh, because violence has been such a currency of our social transaction that uh, it is featured in almost every aspect of our currency of our social. Yeah, it's, it, it features in almost every transaction of, of our lives. So the greatest challenge for this generation now is how do we conquer violence, to use such a term, you know, how, how do we as a society acknowledge that we have a problem, that it is almost like a disease, it is at epidemic proportions, and how do we as stakeholders, as leaders, put together the measures to address it? Well, before we get to measures, we have to look at it. How did we get sick, sir? If we're at disease and epidemic proportion, I mean, Neville was talking this morning about when he was growing up as a young boy and what society was like and how you could feel free to walk. And I'm trying to figure out how we got here because crime has always been a thing, right? I mean, as the country develops and things, you know, become more technologically advanced and we grow and so on, you expect that there will be some of it. But how did it become a, a, a currency of a social transaction? Well, first, there are so many dimensions of the problem. Uh, the problem that is front-facing that the society would immediately recognize is the weakening of the state, uh, certainly in terms of its ability to secure our okay. society through public order, securing our borders, and <clears throat> treating with criminal enterprises. Uh, and once that has occurred, uh, then it becomes very difficult to regain control. How did the weakening happen? The, you know, look, I, we have to be frank with ourselves. Mm -hmm. it, it, it started with, you know, the political gangs. It's the corruption of the state generally. It's not addressing effectively the, the uh, narco trafficking mm -hmm. issues that mm -hmm. we've had. And that has been a significant weakening factor mm -hmm. of the state. But I think the biggest thing, however, would be the lack of investment in national security. But that's just one element. Uh, and then there is the breakdown of standards and norms uh, and mores in our society and uh, not addressing it immediately. So it has not happened overnight. Mm -hmm. You're looking at, you know, certainly within the last 40 years of a consistent breakdown. Yeah. I think this generation has recognized it that it is a problem For and sure. we have to address it. For sure. Um, the, the problem now is the stakeholders that are involved. Can we get everybody on board to recognize that there are certain behaviors that reinforce violence yep. and makes the problem that more intractable? But I would want to say, however, this is not something that we can't solve. It will take a generation to solve it, but it is something that yep. we can solve. Tomorrow is Independence Day, sir, and I know you will speak to the nation in a nutshell. What will you tell us? 
Well, firstly, uh, I, I will be addressing this issue of, of violence uh, and how the government is going to use legislation, programs, and its budget to start to address the issue and, of course, bringing stakeholders together. But I also would want to give people hope mm -hmm. because, as you know, hardships they are. But the land, land is green, green and the sun shining, shining, which effectively <laughs> means that you have challenges, but God has also given you the resources to conquer those right. challenges. Uh, and so there's always hope. And uh, the, our 60th year is, is one of hope. We should also reflect on some of the amazing achievements that as a little nation we have done. It's not a small thing that Jamaica continues to be uh, a very robust uh, democratic nation uh, in a world where democracy uh, is under threat in, in, in many areas. Jamaica continues to be a beacon in, in that regard. We have a very strong and participatory civil society, um, which has really you know, been something that we should be proud of because that has helped us to avoid crises in many ways. Uh, we have a, a strong and robust free press, which has helped us to again Good avoid pressure, yes mm -hmm. avoid crises. Mm -hmm. um, we have a very strong civil bureaucracy, public bureaucracy, uh, has its challenges, challenges with efficiency and implementation, challenges with corruption. But relative to other countries, Jamaica's civil bureaucracy is very strong. Right now, the challenge is. How do we comply with all the laws and uh, uh, systems that we're putting in place and at the same time be efficient? So we are going through a development period yeah. in our civil bureaucracy, but still very strong. Um, if you look at healthcare, you know, education, even national security, it's um, in, in terms of structural investment that, that is uh, improving. But what I, I like uh, in this generation that we have, I think generally everybody agrees with, is that we have to make the investment in our infrastructure. And we're doing amazingly well in that regard. Uh, over the last five years or so, our capital budget has literally doubled, uh, meaning that we are spending more on putting in place the critical infrastructure and not just you know, spending on roads, putting on the blacktop on the mild surface. No, when we say a road today, it's sewer, it's water, it's telecommunications, it's smart sensors, and well-built structures that are climate smart and resilient. I saw you um, handing over keys for Ruthven Towers. Yes. Saw you yesterday at the logistics hub. So good things are happening. I oh, every day I, something I, good is happening. I find you. Jamaica so interesting because we are we are the best of ourselves. We are the worst of ourselves. We are the it's the best of times. It's the worst of times. We're a real paradox this country, but I hear you talk about this generation a lot. And there's something that you said recently that I thought was very interesting. Um, you admitted that you understand why millennials are fed up with yeah. Jamaica. Very interesting. You understand why they are leaving yeah. and why they want to leave. Yes. And then you went on further to say, but you don't want them to abdicate their responsibility Precisely. to leave Jamaica because they're the ones on whom you will rely as succession to help fix it. There are some folks who took umbrage to that statement, abdicating responsibility, because they're saying, but Mr. PM, it's your responsibility and your government's responsibility to, to make us want to stay. So that is part of the, the, the issue. Who is responsible? And unfortunately, there has been a break in that notion of I own my country. So the, the, the pre-1962 generation <coughs> would have a different perspective. <coughs> Sorry, forgive me. Would have a different perspective. They would be saying, oh, that's fine. They, they would be saying, this is my country. I fought through the 1938 struggles. Nobody ha handed anything to me. I fought through it. I struggled for it. This is my country. I'm proud of it. And I'm going to hold my leaders to account. I have nowhere else to go. This is what I'm going to do to save my country. And there are many Jamaicans, forgive me, many Jamaicans who still hold that this is my country. I was a millennial. 
you know, I was thinking like a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and my children are yes, millennials. Yes. Uh, and so I, I, I speak with them, so I understand how they, how they feel. There is a great sense of disappointment, mm -hmm. which is what they, I think they really mean to say, that the generations since independence have not fixed the problem. But the truth is that, you know, we one day will not be in a position of leadership in the country and the next generation will take over. What will happen? The same cycle of saying, well, I'm not responsible. I think as we celebrate our independence, every Jamaican has to reflect on their own responsibility because the truth is they are responsible for their government. Hold that thought, please, sir. We're going to go for a break. Um, do you mind staying with us? Of sir? course. Uh, we're going to go for a break. Uh, yeah. The Most Honorable Prime Minister, Andre Holness, will spend some more time with us. Please, so come back. It's going to be rough with me, man. I'm going to tell Mr. PM and let him deal with you. Off you. You're just joining. Right. 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 We've been reviewing the nation's progress with our most honorable PM, uh, Andrew Holness, here in studio. Thank you again, sir, for joining us. My pleasure. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to pick up here. They say heavy is the head that wears the crown, eh? 2016 was when you took office for the second time. You've been going since. Um, I'm curious as to how you deal with the perception you think Jamaica has of you. There are very difficult decisions you've had to make. You've come under fire several times. And we're just speaking during the break about something that you, you call a, a respect complex. Um, just, just drill down on that for us a, a little bit more. Right. So, you know, every politician wants to be popular. But Jamaica's problems are such that they can't be fixed with popularity. And if you have popularity, at the end of the day, if you haven't achieved anything with it, then it's just a wasted asset. So in effect, you build up your political capital to use it to achieve something that is substantial, transformational. So a part of my job as uh, prime minister is not only to be an administrator. A part of my job as prime minister is to lead the national conversations. And uh, sometimes the national conversation speaks around the issue and does not get incisive enough and deal with the core of the issues. Uh, and so my job, sometimes I have to make statements that not everyone will agree with. In fact, they might be very unpopular. But if people were to be truthful to themselves and reflect upon the statements, they would not they would realize that the statements are not unreasonable. They are not meant to be a disrespect. They are, they are meant to direct and guide mm -hmm. uh, and help to elucidate the problems of the country. Uh, and so some people may take some of my statements as <coughs> being a disrespect, uh, but it is, it is, you can't start there because that's a kind of intolerance. And that's what we find in our society, which leads to Mm -hmm. you know, violence and disagreements and conflict. If, if we start from a position of expecting that everyone has a right and that right should be respected, then we are on our way to treat with the aggression and the, and the violence and the feeling of disrespect. Uh, and so, so again, part of my job is to open the conversations, guide it, uh, which is why we do heavily on social media because social media is so democratic. So everybody can post yeah. their comments and make their views. We read them. Do you? Do yes. Yeah. We so have are you a, on your own social? Media? Not me alone. Okay. Well, obviously, I could. We get. We get. We get <laughs> literally millions <laughs> on a on a monthly know, basis of comments. But we do review, and we get a sense of what people are feeling. Yeah. So we we do get the sense of the millennials and what they are feeling. Do you know when you start trending? We, As we, A N J U, that's, we know, usually, that's, that's usually, usually the upset. <laughs> Sir, we were talking before you came on, and I obviously I can't imagine what you've been through with a pandemic, and yes. it's probably the worst time in, in, in life the last couple of years. The toughest part of, of mm. the job for you since you took over? 
you know, really the, the pandemic has been the most challenging uh, because we've had to deal with this for such a long period of time. But we took on executive powers. And Jamaica is not used to being run by executive powers. In other words, we, we relied heavily on the DRMA, mm -hmm. the Disaster Risk Management Act, defining times when people could travel, when businesses could open. Now, once you take on that kind of authority, that kind of power, uh, then when people don't feel that the decision wasn't made in their favor, they feel that an injustice was done. And so the, 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 you would believe that the public health issues would be the greatest issue in the pandemic. No, it was the issue of fairness and equity in the use of power and authority. And by the way, this was not just in Jamaica. This was the case right across the, the world. Indeed, several governments uh, and leaders have fallen into problems because <coughs> they, they, they're using executive powers uh, and people felt that they weren't used fairly. So <coughs> that has been the greatest challenge because we, we if, if the country could come into the cabinet when we were discussing these things, I think they would be proud because every aspect, every opinion, every perspective is thoroughly debated but you would also have to be proud that a decision was made. Mm -hmm. This was never a government of indecision. And in generally, across everything that we do, we make decisions. Yeah. And for me, it's better that to do something That's rather than something. Yeah. WHO <laughs> says yes. we're still in a pandemic. Of course. And we are. How long do you think it's going to take us, Jamaica, to really get back to where you would want us to, to, to be? Well, firstly, let me, before I deal with the WHO business, Jamaica has is recovering nicely and quickly. Because it was a time of it's great recovering. crisis, but great opportunities as well. Well, precisely. The right. government took decisions that would help us to recover quickly. But to go back to the WHO position, and what I want all Jamaicans to appreciate, this pandemic is not over, <laughs> but there may be other pandemics on the horizon. On the horizon. And we have to be so very careful about our own personal behaviors uh, and how we uh, allow misinformation to affect how we behave. Uh, we saw that in the issue of the vaccine. Again, another controversial issue with Jamaicans. But, you know, we did the best we could. Uh, and uh, as, as I say, my greatest worry is that there could be others, uh, other pandemic on, on the way, and we have to keep engaging our Jamaicans as to course, how we're going to treat. I have to yes. jump in, Prime Minister, mm -hmm. because we're, we're going to go for news in a little while, but I have some light questions for you. And you, you get light? A, yeah, you get about <laughs> half a second to answer them. Cory Goat mm -hmm. or Roxdale? Oh, God, man, Cory Goat. Cory Goat. Dominoes are loaded. You know, I, I, I'm not a good Domino player, but, you know, I, I'd say uh, I'm Domino's. Beach or river? Beach. I, I said this morning that I've never been to a river and everybody laughed after No, I, I, I mean, I, I grew up near a river, so I've I... never been to a river. If Mr. Payne had said he'd never been to a river, I would have no. to get up off the stage. No, 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 I, 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 I grew up, I, by the way, I just, just, I mean, I grew up right next to the Rio Cobra in, yes, in, in, in I have City. Never been I, and uh, I mean, we haven't spoke about environment and yeah. so forth, but I will be addressing that issue yeah. uh, as, as well. As, as, uh, unless you said Dunn's River Falls is a river. I've been to it. We've been through this. <laughs> Julie, Julie, Mango. Julie Mango or East Indian? What kind of question is that? <laughs> I mean, obvio for obvious reasons, it has to be a Julie yeah. Mango. Why for <laughs> obvious reasons? By the way, before we move on, we will be, I, I want to give you a chance to, to speak about Rio Cobra. Yeah. No, we, we, you know, yesterday I got a full briefing from NEPA and later on I'll be speaking with um, Minister Shaw to get the other perspective on the matter from the mining perspective. Uh, the, the government uh, has to, especially in our period of independence, assure the nation that our environmental assets must be protected. Uh, and uh, the, the, the process has begun. So today, later on, I'll be making a, a statement okay. on that. Final one, rafting or paragliding? Well, I've never done paragliding, so I... I I've I, never I, done I, rafting. Would you want, <laughs> would you want to? Would you well, want of to course, try? it's something I'd, I'd, I'd love to do if I, if I get the You're opportunity. You're an adventurer? 
you know, these days, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think so, but, but these days I have to be very careful, you know. Yeah, we, we have to go, but uh, do you largely still feel Jamaica? You have, do you think you have the wind behind your back? Of course. You do? Of course, of course. Uh, when you're in this position, you are always uh, the focus of people's frustration, of people's upset and anger, uh, but you're also their hope. Uh, and you recognize that, uh, and you do your best, and you work very hard. And I don't think any Jamaican can say that, you know, we are not putting out uh, the greatest effort possible on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, I am opening something, breaking ground for somewhere, doing something new, incrementally transforming Jamaica before your very eyes. Jamaica today yeah. is not the Jamaica from 2015. We're going to go to news, <coughs> sir. I, I kind of have a feeling I'd like you to spend a little bit more time with us. Oh, the most I, I have a little time to spend. Yeah, the most honorable Prime Minister, Andrew. We're so lucky. And we'll show off more of the Prime Minister's fun side in something to smile about. I wonder certain, what that is. I'm not certain what that's about, <laughs> but we're going to go to the second edition of News in Five. Stay with us, please. Soon come. <laughs>